You clicked on this video because you're in the market for an electric golf cart. This is the Alfred Golf E-Wheels V2. In my opinion, the best electric golf cart you can buy and probably the most affordable. It's about $900. There'll be a link to purchase it in the description below. If you're looking for an electric golf cart, buy this electric golf cart. It works with your current bag. There's a bunch of sweet add-ons on it. I'll go over that in the rest of this video, but I just wanted to get it out of the way. If you're looking for an electric golf cart, get an E-Wheels V2 by Alfred Golf. What it is, is you remove the back wheels off your push cart, and the V2 is a battery with two wheels on it. So you just simply drop this on, and then you're good to go. You can control it with a remote, you can control it with an optional TFS or tether follow system, which is essentially just a tether that connects to a magnet on a belt clip, and it follows you around. You don't feel the tether. When it stops, you stop. And you also have an app that comes with it, so if your remote ever dies, you can control it with that. One of the best things about this cart is it feels like you're playing golf with a caddy because you don't have to carry your clubs or you don't have to push your bag. What I do is walking down the fairway, I drive the cart to my ball. By the time I get to the ball, the cart's already there. Hit the shot and then drive it off. The other nice thing is when you're on a green, you can bring the remote with you, you leave your cart off to the side, bring your putter, and then when you're done putting out, you simply just drive the cart to the next hole. And this works great because it's saving you time. You don't have to walk back to your cart. You just meet your cart at the next tee box. A couple of the details on it. It comes with a 5200 milliamp hour battery. Should be good for 27 holes, if not more. I know other people who've gotten 36 holes out of it. And the, one of the great things about it is that you can use your current push cart. This cart is a Click Gear Rovic RV1S. The S is important because that means swivel. The front wheel swivels. If you don't have a cart with a front swivel, it's not going to turn as sharp. But Alfred Golf sells a front wheel conversion kit for $90. It essentially replaces your front wheel with two wheels that will allow you to drive it and make it turn like so. And that's what makes this so great is because it works with your current golf cart. And if the battery were to die on the course, which has never happened to me, you can turn it into freewheel mode. You just hit the stop button for three seconds and essentially you push it like a normal cart. Wanted to show you some footage of me using it on the course. Here I am using the TFS following me. This is Minnesota in November, and it's really windy, so I thought it would be better to voice over it. Wanted to go over a couple quick price numbers. V2 is $839. Link in the description. A lot of times it's on sale, so check that link. The TFS is an optional $150. If your current push cart does not have front wheels that swivel, the conversion kit is $90. And if you do want an extra battery, it is $170. I've never ran out of battery on the course, though. Here's how I normally use it with the remote. You can see I'm just using the remote, steering it, and by the time I get to the ball, I stop the cart, and the cart is waiting for me to hit my next shot. Here I am with some rougher terrain. You probably normally wouldn't drive the cart over this. I just wanted to show you what it would look like going through some rougher terrain. If you are ever concerned, just go slower, and then just hold on to it at a slow speed, or put it into freewheel mode, if the terrain is too rough for you. As I'm coming to this newly paved cart path here, I'm gonna slow down, make sure it goes over the cart path, and then as I get to the other side, I'm gonna speed up, and you can see the front wheel comes off the ground. There are six speeds. You hit up or forward on the remote to go up a speed, and then down or back to go to uh, slow down. I end up normally using it around speed three or four, which I feel is like normal walking speed. Here it is going over a bridge. This is obviously a very wide bridge designed for carts. And I'm making some minor corrections, but no issues going over a bridge like this. Here's the wheelie bars, just showing you what they do. If it, the hill is too steep, the wheelie bars do catch it. If it is a really steep hill, I highly suggest standing behind it to make sure it doesn't tip over backwards if you go too fast. Here's the freewheel mode. You hold the middle button, the stop button for three seconds. The red light on the V2 blinks. That puts it into freewheel mode. 
so you can push the cart. So if your battery ever dies or you want to go through a narrow space, you push it like that. And then to put it back into freewheel mode, just hit any button. The red light turns back red from blinking. And you can use the remote or TFS just as you normally would. So here's what your cart looks like. And here is your attachment right here. Then you grab your e-wheels. I keep mine in a duffel bag because it's easier. You can see it's dirty from last time out. And then you just pull this apart. You want to come closer to it. So you see it's important that the V2 is facing that way. And then if you want to kind of get a close up here, there's clamps. These clamps, you pull it as wide and these clamps go right over the bar like so. And then you shut these clamps and then you shut the other one and then you pull this lever back and it snaps into place, it snaps into place. Then you do this and then you grab the wheelie bars which are included. They have a little button, silver button right here. You push that button and it locks in and you lock it in like so. And then you grab your bag, put your bag on your cart as you normally would. You hit the power button on the unit. Now I haven't charged it since last time. And you've got your remote, hit any button and you're good to go. And then all you do, you do the exact opposite when you want to put it away. The remote's pretty self-explanatory. You've got forward, backward, left, right, stop. This is a 15 and a 30. That goes for 15 yards and 30 yards, meaning if you hit that, the cart will go for 15 yards and stop. The same thing with 30. You've got the G for gyroscope, which is the yellow light on the bottom, or excuse me, on top of the battery. I just always leave that on. And then this is the lock button. When I use this is, let's say I'm gonna to go to a green, I drive the cart to the side of the green, grab the remote, hit the lock button, put it in my pocket, put out, and then you can just hit any other button and it will unlock it. This way, it, it stops you from accidentally hitting the button while the remote is in your pocket. Here's a hack that I made for the remote. The remote comes with a little mount that goes on the handle that you hold on to. But what I've done is use a piece of metal that comes from a cell phone mount and then just glued a magnet to the top of the cart. And then I just stick the remote there when I'm done using it. The remote is charged by a micro USB on the left side. Plug it in, green light comes on. When that turns off, it is done charging. The remote should last four to five rounds. I charge it after every three just to be safe, but I have yet to have it die on me on the course. Here's the battery for the V2. You can see there's five circles, five white circles. This is after playing 18 holes. I still have three circles left. So pretty good for one battery use. Like I said, you can get 27 plus holes on a charge, probably closer to 36 if the course is more flat. You'll see that yellow light. That is the gyroscope light that's on your remote. Always leave that on as it makes the V2 track straighter when you're driving it. Here's how you pull out the battery. There's a latch on the side. I would normally do this at home. You pop it out and then you can see that's the plug to charge it and then you put it back in. I normally just leave the wheels in my car and pull the battery out and bring the battery in to charge it. Really easy to charge the battery. Just take the included charger, and if you notice on the charging brick itself, there's a green light. Plug the battery in. That green changes to red, so you know it's charging. It takes about three hours. You don't really want to overcharge it, so I just set an alarm from three hours after I charge it to unplug it. Now, this is an optional attachment. It's the TFS, which is known as the tether follow system. So all you do is you connect this. You put this on your bag, like so. Hit the button, and you can see the blue light is now on. It comes with this little metal clip you put on your belt, like so. Once you have it turned on, all you do is you grab the tether, attach it to the magnet on your clip, and you can go. I made a little add-on here. This is a Bag Boy bag. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. I just keep my laser in there, so when I get to the ball, I grab the laser, shoot the yardage, throw that back in there, hit the shot, and then drive on. It's a nice little addition to have to make it easier to access your laser or anything else you need if your current push cart doesn't have that. That's my review on the E-Wheels V2 by Alfred Golf.
it's the best golf purchase I've ever made and one of the best things I've ever bought. When you get the e-wheels, it will come with instructions on how to take the wheels off and connect it. I'm not that mechanically inclined and I was able to figure it out. So if I can do it, I'm sure you can do it. Just the best, I mean, it's just, it's so much fun. Everybody, every time I play somewhere, somebody asks me, hey, what is that? How much was it? You know, those kind of questions. And it just makes, it, you feel like you're playing golf with a caddy without having to pay for a caddy. So I can't say enough good things about it. If you have any questions about it, drop them in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them. But again, it's the Alford Golf E-Wheels V2. If you are in the market for an electric golf cart, I can't recommend this one enough. Hope you enjoyed the review, and until next time, caca.